Definitely resembles um, a foreskin to the touch. <laughs> nice, lovely. I'm, I'm actually, now you say that, I understand. Yeah, yeah, but I'm actually quite sure that a lot of people in America will not know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyway. I have to uh, introduce you to some of my viewers. Most of them I don't even know personally. Hi guys, this is Simon and Rachel. Uh, she's been helping me on my uh, Simon Discoveries project recently. And today we're going to be cooking some wild edibles, including Jew ears, and some kind of mushrooms that I don't know if uh, all of you have heard of it, but we're going to introduce them a little bit so that you know what we're talking about. They're basically edible looking quite funny and we're gonna tell you what they are what you can do with them uh, get out of them and uh, try and tell you what they taste like because obviously you can't taste it <laughs> all right all right so they're called um, juicy or jelly ear apparently is more politically correct uh, in China, I think they call them wood ear, where they use them quite a lot dried and powdered in um, stews and soups and things like that. And apparently they actually, or well, in China, they believe they have um, medicinal qualities, so they will eat them in a soup or a broth, um, you know, if they have a flu or a cold or something like that. Um, but I did read that they're quite a good source of iron and also uh, B vitamins, especially B1 and B2. So that's really good for um, helping to break down carbs, fats and protein. Um, so really important in energy production. Um, apparently they're not too tasty, uh, as in they don't have like a distinctive flavor, but they're more... More like tasteless. Yeah, well they're good at absorbing the flavor of other things, apparently. All right. And they take quite, well, I mean, they're quite tough. You can see they're quite gelatinous. So we're going to cook the, try and cook them for about half an hour, apparently. You can find these all year round. They're very common. Well, in, in the UK, they're very common. I think maybe, I'm not sure about elsewhere. Find them all year round um, on, I think it's on like Dead Elder, I think is the main place they grow. But also you can find them on other things as well, other trees as well. Uh, Elder. Yeah. Where did you find them? Um, what tree or? Were they actually on, on a tree? Yeah, they were on um, Deadwood. I'm not sure what it was. So it was just lying on the ground? Mm. Mm. I've only ever found them on Deadwood, to be honest. Yeah, they never grow on, on, ground, on the ground. Yeah, no, no. As far oh, as yeah, I... yeah, dead. Yeah, or I've seen them on Living Wood as well. And you get them all year round, they're really good at uh, resisting uh, frost. So, I mean, I picked these literally the other day, you know, the middle of February, so. And we have them in Poland, so they can definitely uh, take some beating from, from frost. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, so we're, what we're thinking of doing with them is, like I said, I never tried them before. We're gonna slice them up um, and just make a kind of oriental style uh, broth with some ginger garlic. Oh, I've got some ingredients here if anyone's interested. Sounds cool. Okay, so what do we have? What are we gonna add to this broth? Um, well, we're gonna use obviously water, about a cup of water. We've also got some garlic, ginger, um, a bit of chili, as much as you like. I like things spicy, but I don't know if Simon does. Do you like spicy food? Not, not too much. So, about 10 of these now, I'm joking. Um, and yeah, I've got some soy sauce, uh, I've got light sauce, soy sauce, you can use uh, dark soy sauce if you want. Honestly, I don't really know the difference, I think it's a bit richer, a bit sweeter. Um, and you can use, traditionally you'd use like rice wine vinegar or something like that, didn't have any. So I'm going to go for some cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar instead. Quite similar, um, maybe not quite as sweet as rice wine vinegar. Um, oh yeah, and to make it into sort of more of a meal, we've also got some tofu and some noodles. So we're going to have sort of more of a, a noodle... Um, a noodle broth just to make it more substantial so it's not just kind of like mushrooms and water. So we actually feel like we ate something. Yeah, basically. Um, and I guess tofu, using tofu because I don't eat meat, you could put meat or something in it if you want, I guess. Um, even like dried meat or something, if, if you're cooking outdoors, might be more um, appropriate. 
but yeah, we're going to use tofu, which is also very good at absorbing the flavour of other things, so... Cool. Okay, so let's do it then. Yeah. Okay. So how much garlic do we want? Maybe like just one bit, actually. No, the whole thing. Two. Both, yeah. I, I like I like garlic, so don't don't worry about that. <laughs> I have a first aid kit on me. That's not helpful. Okay. You can, can you try to do it with the pommel of this of the knife instead? Oh yeah. That's gonna be safer. Okay, and then look, the skin just comes off. See what I'm saying? I know, but you already mashed up the garlic. We're gonna chop it up some more anyway, so why does it matter? Or do you want it in big chunks? Is what you're saying? No, no, no. I usually just chop it really finely with a uh, chef's knife. And for that, I need this to be uh, intact when I begin with. Rachel got this knife from me, so you can imagine this is a really sharp knife. And, um, Wait, don't don't put the bit in of me talking about cutting off my finger. <laughs> <laughs> you are looking yeah, competent. She, she hasn't had her proper um, introduction to how to use a knife safely. <laughs> Maybe I should have done that before. Well, if you cut yourself, we're gonna eat some. We're gonna have some uh, red dye in the in the broth, Aww, and nasty. more nutrients as well. You, you were talking something about uh, iron. <laughs> There's gonna be even more. You just cut yourself. You did. Did I? Shit! I didn't even notice. Ah, that's how sharp it is. <laughs> Serious garlic breath after this. <laughs> no, it's a it doesn't smell that bad after all. Yep. Yeah. We can just uh, get ourselves a little something to hold the handle up. So otherwise, it's just going to get um, really hot very quickly. Yeah. So, already in here we have um, the juicy, just cut, in, cut into strips. Um, a lot of a lot of ginger and chili, uh, ginger and uh, garlic, a little bit of chili. Um, I think maybe too much garlic. We're gonna, I can smell it already. It's yeah. really pungent. I like it. <laughs> uh, we just cut that up into big chunks. Really, just rustic. Don't really care. I mean. I guess if you're doing this at home, you'd probably want to do it more finely. So now we're going to put in about um, uh, the apple cider vinegar, or like I said, you can use rice wine vinegar. Traditionally, you would use rice wine vinegar in like Japanese cooking and that. So we're going to put in about a tablespoon of this, I reckon. About a tablespoon. Um, 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 tablespoon of soy sauce. Um, and that's essentially your salt. And then... Yeah, because we're not using salt for this. Yeah, no, That's well, you never really need salt if you use soy sauce. Really I mean, salty stuff. It's pretty salty already. Like I said, you can get like a... dark soy sauce, light soy sauce. I mean, I prefer the light, to be honest. Is that light? Yeah, light soy sauce. I don't really know the difference. It looks pretty dark to me. It does. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it's the same colour. The dark one is, is pretty much the same. With, well, it's kind of dark brown, black. Okay. So then we're going to leave this um, maybe for about 20 minutes before we add the uh, the noodles because the noodles only need uh, four to five minutes so we'll add them in near the end um, and maybe we'll add the tofu in a bit near the end as well just because if it cooks too long it will start okay. crumbling. Now it's really good to have this full control over the flame size 
for outdoors cooking this is really amazing you can't well you could do it with uh, an open fire but yeah. that would be really difficult to you get couldn't, this. You couldn't boil it and then bring it down just to simmer. simmer. Yeah. yeah, you couldn't simmer. You probably could just lift it up, but then, you know, the fire gets really yeah. strong and then dies down and then gets stronger as you add fuel and then dies down again. So you have really difficult control. So it's not really good for sort of if you want to simmer something for a long time. Yeah. Half an hour or so. I guess you do. You can do this if you're really experienced, but, you know, if you just want to go out there once in a while, this is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what do we... What are we doing now? So now we're just going to leave it for about 20 minutes and then... Cover it? Yeah, see how it goes. And then we'll add in the noodles and the tofu. Um, maybe test test it a little bit to see how tough the... Uh, how long are we going to leave it for? 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Yeah. And Should then we'll, we'll put... take time? Yeah. 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 And then we'll, yeah, like I said, add the noodles. Okay. And the tofu. Right, so before we... Uh, leave you guys we're gonna be back uh, in 20 minutes because nothing's not gonna really happen in well they're the not really gonna they're not gonna be sitting there for 20 minutes yeah <laughs> so we're gonna fast forward that. but there is one one more thing I wanted to point out here yeah just checking if this is in frame uh, I was explaining this off camera this little thing uh, gizmo that you can see here uh, I just cut a, a little piece of uh, wood a little fork because if you let allow this to hang freely and it's gonna get so hot you can't touch it and uh, the thing is this is obviously like Rachel said this is a really bad idea for uh, cooking on a uh, gas stove but then again this isn't this hasn't been designed for gas stoves this has been designed to hang off uh, of some sort of uh, device over an open fire so but yeah I suppose this is gonna work pretty well I can touch it right now and yeah it's cold virtually cold. Right, see you guys later then. Okay guys, I'm not sure if you can hear me properly because I'm using this uh, unidirectional microphone. But anyway, there is a, you can see the strop fungus growing on a dead birch tree. And what was its other? Bir birch polypore. Birch polypore, yes. So, and I'm gonna explain, you, explain it to you. Why am I even mentioning this at the moment? The reason I mentioned the strop fungus or the birch polypore, birch polypore. Uh, was because you may have noticed <laughs> that Rachel cut herself yeah. and this fungus happens to be very good at stopping uh, bleeds, excessive bleeding. And this wasn't excessive. Oh, it wasn't it was, excessive. That was, it was a scratch. But it's still, <laughs> well, it's still good to have that option. Yeah, because it, it was bleeding. Yeah. You know those cut, we cut, cut it a little bit, but it's bleeding a lot. Uh, it's it's really good at this, and we use the regular plaster just to keep it in place. So we've, yeah, we've got the yeah. the chunk of. So we obviously didn't use the one growing on the tree because it's just too high, but uh, I actually carry one in my uh, first aid kit all the time. I like it so much because I've used it so many times, and that's it, actually never failed me, and it's proven itself to be really useful. In as I was explaining to Rachel earlier. Uh, off camera that uh, sometimes it will stop really warring bleeds like you would think that this is uh, something requiring stitching or something like this and you just apply it press it and it's going to stop you bleeding need in stitches no time. when you have fungus <laughs> if you do need stitches you should, you should get some but no, uh, just, just go just go pick some mushrooms <laughs> <laughs> no but i mean this, as, a, as a temporary solution for the time being yeah it really does yeah. does a great job i'm pretty sure right, it's not bleeding anymore this. yeah no it's not I can show them if they want, but it might be a bit gory. No, I'll just leave it. <laughs> okay, we're going to put the noodles in now. Um, to be honest, it would be better if we had a bit more water in there, but we run out of water, so we don't really have... There is a river. And we get the river. It's, it's a bit... It's, yeah. <laughs> we don't want to use... I wouldn't go near that. So I'm going to put the noodles in, and it's not really hot enough, but... No, just give it some time. It, it will it get will go down. down. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, like I said, you don't, I mean, you could put like some rice in here or something if you want to make it more of a meal. Noodles are fine. Or, or you could just make it as a broth and dip in some bread or something like that. We probably need a bit more water for the noodles, but... Or you could cook them separately and then add them in at the end, but obviously... Doing it in one pot. Doing it in one pot. pot is good. And if you can do it in one pot, why not? Even at home, you know, it saves, saves washing up. True. Yeah. <laughs> if I can do something in one pot, I always do. <laughs> it's good outdoor thinking. Yeah. 
I found these, like I said, soba noodles, so the buckwheat and also the wheat, but these also have shiitake mushrooms in them added, so they have like, I don't know, maybe they're going to taste a bit mushroomy, might add to the mushroom flavour. But yeah, I thought they were quite interesting, I saw them in the shop and I thought, why not? So, yeah. Oh, I'm also going to add the tofu, forgot about that. Are you going to be adding this now? Yeah. yeah. Probably put the lid back Staring on and leave it for another few minutes. Right now, I can say it smells a lot of like a lot of um, garlic and ginger. That's about all I'm getting. Which is good. Which is <laughs> the good. mushrooms aren't going to taste of anything apart from garlic and ginger, but <laughs> there'll be a nice texture. So should I uh, close the lid? Yep. Yeah. Do you think we've got enough noodles? Yeah, we've probably got enough noodles in there. How long are we supposed to leave it like this? Uh, about five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, five minutes. Okay. He's very exact with his timing. No, this time I'm just <laughs> checking it. So it's uh, five to three. Cool. So we're going to check this again at three. All right. Okay. So this is my first juice ear. <laughs> I've never eaten one. I've heard of them. <laughs> Makes it sound like a cannibal. I'm not really um, so sure that I should be doing this right now because I can't tell. I mean, if he dies, his, li his life is on my. On we my have fingers. it. We have it on camera, Rachel. Mm. Really chewy? No, it's actually quite crunchy and uh, easy to chew. A little garlicky, but <laughs> not too much. I wonder why. Bad. Probably the like two fat cloves of garlic we put in. Actually not too bad. So what do you think? That's good. It yeah. tastes like garlic. <laughs> Is it good? Oh, was I supposed to wait for you? Yeah, you're supposed to wait for me. Oh, I'm such no, an ass. You're not a gentleman. Is it good? Mm. <laughs> yes, but it's oh, it's freaking hot. Is it spicy? It's spicy, yeah. I only added one dried chilli. <sighs> My fungus is a, um, a little chewy. It's nice though, I kind of like the texture. Yeah, it's definitely not bad. And apparently it's good for you. Iron, vitamin B1, vitamin B2. Bit of blood. Bit of bit of my bit of my finger in there. <laughs> I'm gonna try and that's good. You think it's spicy? It is a little, but it's not like crazy. But I can I can definitely tell that there is some. I think I think he's uh, can't handle can't handle the heat. <laughs> He's a pussy. <laughs> well, you said it, not me. I can imagine that some people might find the texture of the uh, the fungus a bit... You know, some people are a bit funny about texture, but then I know people that won't eat mushrooms because they think they're a funny texture. Yeah. No, this is definitely good. I mean, I've, I haven't eaten this. They're nice. They're nice. I've eaten a lot of other mushrooms and these are just as good as any. Yeah. Mm. And they were free. Yeah, free food. Free Except food. for everything else that we added. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but and we're, we're okay, we've eaten this and we're fine. So. I haven't eaten this. So I've, I mean, I've just eaten this, but you know, with we're the liver damage, it takes a while to kick <laughs> in, God so sake. I might still be dead. <laughs> this is it's all on camera. Just, so. just, just for um, clarification, juice it, I don't know if they can see this, my little mushroom guide, juice it, and it says edible. Yeah, right. you, you, the problem is we're relying on your identification skills. <laughs> no, it's you just definitely. Got, you it's just definitely, got one wrong this morning when we got here. But with this oh, it's different. Fungus. With this one, it's very obvious. <laughs> it's very obvious. I wonder if you could eat the strop fungus. It's probably not poisonous, but it. No, you can't. I looked it up. So yeah, but it says it's not edible. But why is it? Um, hang on, wait a second. Let me find it. Does it have toxins, or is it just not tasty? Inedible. The tough flesh has a bit of taste. Yeah, just bitter. Just it. Yeah, so you could probably eat it, it, but it's just not tasty. It. All right, should we just uh, consume this yeah. now in peace? Yeah. Right, guys, so thanks for joining us. And uh, hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, we'll be back with another video yeah, soon. Definitely. See you guys. Okay. Are you ready? No. That's too bad because it's been rolling for quite some time. Has it? <laughs> See, you're so natural when you don't know the camera is rolling. Whatever. It's all good. What you you just have to forget about it. 
work. I know, I really don't like it. I'm probably going to have to do this like 10 times. It really freaks me out.